powered by the Montana Television Network. This is Montana This Morning from Montana's News Leader. Good morning. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Justine Stewart. And I'm Lewis Stewart. Hopefully having a great start to your Wednesday, halfway through the work week, yep. school week, getting closer to the weekend on that downhill slope. We're getting there and yeah. it's 6 a.m. and I don't even remember how cold it was outside this morning. I was tired. Yeah. But it, it didn't feel as bad as it had felt. No, they all start running together though. After a while they all start running yeah. together. It's still cool. Um, we're going to be watching for a system to roll in tomorrow. Now this system that moves in tomorrow it's going to be more typical of what we okay. see this time of more year. More rainy. And yeah, a little more rain. Last year was, or excuse me, last week was something that you used to get, you know, more later on in December or January with all that snow. This is going to be more valley rain, more high mountain snow, and it's not going to be nearly as strong as what we have been seeing. So here's your forecast headlines for this week. Remaining cool, 30s and cloudy today. Then that next system arrives with rain and snow tomorrow morning. That's going to last through Friday. And then weak high pressure looks to dry us out with 40s returning for the weekend. Here's your Wednesday forecast. 38 today, 34 tomorrow. Excuse me, 38 in Missoula today, 34 in Kalispell. We'll see 42 in Hamilton, 36 in Polson. Cloudy to mostly cloudy skies overhead. Missoula Mayor John Engen was elected to a fourth term, beating out challenger Lisa Tripke. Engen did receive 58% of the votes to Tripke's 42% in Tuesday's city election. However, the win didn't come easy for Engen, as Tripke says she ran a strong grassroots campaign. The two mayoral candidates differed on taxes, term limits, and the fundamentals of running a government. According to Tripke, by surrounding herself with a tight-knit group, she was easily able to convey her message to the residents of Missoula. Although she may have lost this election, Tripke believes her campaign has started important conversations across Missoula. I am so thankful for all the support we had. They, they gave us their all, whether it was through um, vocal support, financial contributions, getting the word out to vote, and, and I couldn't have done it without all of them. And I think that the biggest thing that I see that we've done is we've we have um, opened up a conversation in Missoula that hasn't been had before, and we've been able to start that, and, and I hope that um, people are taking notice. Tripke said the one-on-one -on -one conversations that she's had with Missoula residents was just one of the most rewarding parts of running for mayor. There were three open seats up for election on the Missoula City Council. Missoula is divided into six wards, with two representatives for each ward. In Ward 3, candidates were vying for one seat. Ward 3 encompasses the University District, Riverfront, and Slant Street neighborhoods. Current Ward 3 Councilwoman Emily Bentley stepped down to dedicate more time to her job as director of the Missoula County Fairgrounds. Herther Harp won this race. Longtime incumbent John Wilkins was challenged by three other candidates to represent Ward 4. Wilkins lost his seat to newcomer Jesse Ramos. Two candidates were vying to represent Ward 5. That covers the southwest section of Southgate Triangle, South 39th Street, Miller Creek, and Moose Can Gully neighborhoods. Stacey Anderson won that race. Incumbent Municipal Court Judge Kathleen Jenks was elected to serve another term. She was challenged by Brendan McQuillan. Municipal judges oversee city ordinance violations and misdemeanor crimes within the city limits. The Missoula City Council appointed Mirtha Becerra to represent Ward 2, left vacated after Ruth Ann Sweeney resigned. Becerra is a former planner for the City of Missoula. Her appointment begins immediately and it will expire January 2020. Ward 2 represents the West Side and Grant Creek neighborhoods and areas in the city limits west of North Russell Street. In the Bitterroot Valley, there were three contested mayoral races, a slew of city council seats across the county, and a second school levy request in Corvallis. Based on the results, it looks like Bitterroot Towns will have new mayors come January 1st. It appears the votes were looking for some new blood. With Hamilton Mayor Jerry Steele stepping down, Dominic Ferenkopf quickly sewed up the win over Councilwoman Travis Martinez. Ferenkopf says he's looking forward to working with Martinez and the rest of the council. Darby voters appear ready for a change after a tumultuous year for the town's government. Incumbent Mayor J.C. McDowell lost against challenger Willard Buck Titus. In Stevensville, they will be represented with a new mayor. In the three-way Stevensville race, challenger Brandon Dewey beat incumbent Jim Cruz. Mark Adams was a distant third. Corvallis voters turned out by the hundreds to decide what happens to a proposed five-year building reserve levy to buy 21 acres of land next to school campus from Ravalli Electric Co-op. Voters overwhelmingly approved this levy. 
In the Flathead, for Kalispell voters, there were two open seats on the Kalispell City Council. Columbia Falls voters were asked to vote for a mayor and four candidates were vying for three open seats on the Columbia Falls City Council. In Whitefish, residents voted for a municipal judge. Let's start with Kalispell City Council Ward 3. Kyle Waterman beat incumbent Jim Atkinson. Two candidates were vying for one open seat to represent Ward 4 of the Kalispell City Council. Incumbent Tim Klusner beat his challenger, by, who was Sid Dowd. Current Columbia Falls Mayor Donald Barnhart beat his challenger, John Rallis, and will serve another term. This was the first contested Columbia Falls mayoral race since 2001. Three candidates were vying for Whitefish Municipal Court Judge. Current Judge Bradley Johnson is retiring. William Heilman will now be taking his place. Also, Eureka residents were asked to vote on an $18.15 million bond. Voters have said no to this request to construct a new kindergarten through 8th grade building, which would have attached to the existing Lincoln County High School. Montana PBS will be airing a special for the artist and sculptor Charlie M. Russell next week. MTN's Kenneth Webb met with one of the men at, that put his history together to give you a little sneak peek. You know, I think Montanans will absolutely enjoy this film uh, and to see our Montana landscape before there were fences, and be, when it was in its developing stages, when Helena was really, as, it, as the writer says in the film, it was what it was called, the last chance gulch, and it looks like it, and it was a rough and difficult place, and Charlie came here and he experienced that, and uh, we see that in his paintings. Charlie Kid Russell had spent 11 years as a cowboy and would spend 33 years as a professional artist. Between the saddle and the easel, it was an arithmetic or a Nancy calculus that eventually would equal financial success and international renown. But also in this film, you'll see great photographs and you'll, you'll hear from scholars and others about what it was like to live in Montana at those times in those formative years um, as, the, as the state was just, well, not even quite a state yet, actually. The Charlie Russell was the governor of Montana looking to put a mural in the House of Representatives. Um, so I think, I think Montanans will have an opportunity to experience um, Montana um, through the eyes of Charlie Russell, Nancy Russell, uh, and many of the great cowboy friends who were dear friends to him all of his life. I think that's one of the great takeaways uh, that comes through at the end of the film, is that Charlie Russell was not so much about being interested in being a famous, um, making a lot of money, although Nancy was interested in making him successful, but Charlie Russell was all about his friends, um, his friends from Utica, Montana, and his friends that he made through all those years, uh, Indian friends, cowboy friends, and he never forgot those friends. And that will come through very clearly in the film, that that, that was key for Charlie. Reporting from Bozeman, Kenneth Webb, MTN News. The three-hour special will be aired only one hour at a time for each of the three days starting November 13th through the 15th at 8 p.m. on Montana PBS. All right, it is time to send on over to Lewis now. He's got your weather on the 8th. All right, thank you, Justine. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Wednesday. We saw some clearing yesterday afternoon in some areas, making way for some really beautiful pictures. How about this great one sent in to us by Shiloh yesterday? This is over near East Missoula. Shiloh, thank you so much for this fantastic photo right here. Love the snow on the trees, the river there. Beautiful shot. Now, we saw some clearing here in Missoula. Other areas, especially in northwestern Montana, it looked pretty much like this throughout the day. Kept those clouds overhead, those low-lying clouds, didn't allow temperatures to warm up. 29 is where they topped out at in Kalispell yesterday. And unfortunately, this is the sort of thing we're going to see all across western Montana for today, tomorrow, and Friday. As clouds overhead will bring also some light rain and snow shower opportunities tomorrow morning. We'll look at that here in just a minute. First, a quick look at your temperatures, mostly in the 20s. We're seeing 11 in Sealy Lake and Phillipsburg, 23 in Hamilton, 26 in Sula, 24 in Missoula. We're at 22 in Polson, 25 this morning in Thompson Falls. So a quick look at our radar. You can see clouds overhead. Also, 
picking up a little bit of light snow falling in some places. Have some very light snow falling around Polson and Kalispell down toward Plains and Superior this morning. And then another system it looks like it's getting ready to push into west central Montana. So places like Missoula and Hamilton could get a few little flurries this morning. Really not expecting a lot with this as that main system is still off to our west. Just moving it off of the Pacific. You can see it here and that's what's going to reach us by tomorrow morning. Now the system that moves in we're not expecting a lot of rain with it or even a lot of snow. It's going to be much lighter than the systems that we saw last week. So here is a look at your future track rain. We're going to go ahead and stop this Saturday morning by the time it's all said and done. Generally less than two tenths of an inch of rain. So it's just going to be those more light showers that we're going to be expecting Thursday and Friday more the off and on variety. And then as far as your snowfall goes again, not nearly as much snow as what we saw last week. Maybe an inch in Missoula, maybe, maybe an inch in Kalispell, but for the most part, maybe just a few inches in those higher elevations, which could make roads a little bit tricky, especially those high mountain passes for both Thursday and Friday. So this is going to be another time you're just going to want to check those road conditions. All right, here's your seven day forecast. Missoula 38 today. We'll see 42 tomorrow, 43 on Friday with those rain showers moving in. Kalispell temperatures in the 30s today and tomorrow. Then we'll see 40s for Friday and through the weekend. Hamilton 42 today, 47 Thursday, 44 Friday, Saturday and Sunday. All right. Well, thanks, Lewis. And make sure you do stick around because we're right back. But first, here's some birthday shout outs this morning.